Hello, folks. What we have here is an antique chain binder that I bought at an estate sale from a generational ranch that started in the 1860s. And the story goes from the owners of that ranch is that this was used on their wagons back in the 1800s for hauling whatever, wood, a freight, whatever. It's got fairly heavy chain on it. It's a fairly heavy chain binder. And the project for today is to make a smaller version of this for a particular use. And actually, I've already made a couple of these, but I thought I would make a third one to show you how it's done. I want to make point out a couple things on this before we get started is this is completely forge welded and you can kind of tell that by the forge weld on the back here you can see a forge weld witness right here and by the way a forge weld witness does not mean a weak weld on a forge weld i collect antique chain i've got tons of it every time i find antique and uh handmade or hand forged chain I buy it whenever I can so that I can study it now this piece has kind of a tip on it some blacksmiths would do that they would leave kind of a bulge on the end of their weld other blacksmiths would round that off I prefer to round it off but either way it really doesn't matter and all of this chain right here is forge welded too now, see, this particular blacksmith chose on some of his links to leave that bulge on the end, that tip on the end. Some of them are fairly well rounded, like this piece. I can see the forge weld witness right here and a little bit right there. But he rounded that off. Why he chose to round some off and not others, I don't know. But I have, like I said, I have tons of this antique chain that's been hand forged. And some have that, some don't. But anyway, you can see how this is constructed. I'm trying to keep this from falling off my anvil here. This slides down, this opens up. The chain from the other side of whatever your binding goes around here, you bind it down and bring slide this up and then the tension will hold it on there once you tension it down. It works just like a modern chain binder would. This one just happens to be antique. Now, the one that we're making is going to be about half this size. So, let me go out and show you what I'm using these for. And then we'll come back in the shop and start making one. Okay, folks. Here's a set of racks that I built for my truck out of scrap wood recently. And uh, you can see the chain binder in the center there, right here. And you can tell that it's smaller than the one I had on my anvil, but to the perfect size for what I'm using it here for. I've got, if, hopefully you can see this, but I got two sets of chain going across on this rack and two chain binders. And I don't use these so much to secure the cord rounds in the back of the bed. I use it to keep the the wood from pushing out on the racks on the side it just kind of keeps everything tight and you can see that the chain is looped around on the left hand side over there and there's a hook there's a hook right here hopefully you can see that and that gives me adjustment on the chain so as i round the wood up in the back of the bed i have movement there on that left hand side extra length to move it so i'll figure out <clears throat> where the, i need to hook it on to the links and then i'll put it on the chain binder and bind it down now i prefer these over ratchet straps in this situation uh for one ratchet straps especially if you're working by yourself or cumbersome you know you have to throw the strap over the load hook it on to one side of your bed go around try to feed the other side of the strap into the ratchet handle 
And when you're doing that, the other side comes unhooked. I don't know. I just find them cumbersome, especially in this situation. This this works so much better. And I have a set of these that I made that are on another set of racks for my one-ton GMC. And I've been using them for years. They're quick, they're easy, and they just work. They You can put a lot of load on them, and they hold very well. So anyway, uh, let's go back into the shop, and I will show you how to make these. Okay, folks, uh, to start making this chain binder, I have... 3 8 diameter round stock by 18 inches long. And the goal to make the main body of that chain binder is to turn it into a wishbone like that. So I need to heat it up in the center and uh, bend it into a U and start prepping to make a forge weld. Now, you'll notice I have a cone mandrel in my hardy hole here. Now, if you don't have one of these, that's okay. I prefer this when I'm using this particular anvil because the bick or the horn of the anvil is so fat right there that this just makes it easier. If I was using my London pattern anvil where the bick is much more narrow and not as bulky, I would just use the bick of the anvil. But for this anvil, I use my cone mandrel. And it's a lot easier. My fire is a little uh, cold right now, so I kind of stoke it up a little bit. You'll see as we go along, it, it will heat up the steel a lot faster once I get the fire back into shape. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to bend it. And I want it fairly close, fairly even on the ends. And it's just about there. Good enough. Let's cool it off. Well, let's make sure it's straight first. Relatively straight. Good enough. Okay, now we're going to want to turn it around and heat the ends and get ready to make a scarf. I've got a scarf each end, then overlap it, and then make a weld. Okay, then turn it over, scarf the other side. Heat it up and then scarf the other side. Which will be opposed to the scarf I just made. Basically what I'm making is a great big chain line. Same way you make chain. Let's 
fire is starting to get really hot. And since I have it here and it's still hot, I might as well make a bend. Now I'll heat the other side, make a bend, and then overlap those. Okay, I want to make sure that I bend this in the right way. Perfect. Bring that scarf together. Overlap it. I'm fiddling around a bit because I want it. I want it just perfect. Good. Okay, let's heat it up. And then flux it. I just wanted to uh, Good yellow heat here. So let's get any scale off of there. Let's brush it really good and immediately get some flux on that. All righty, let's heat this up and weld it. Good clean fire, no clinkers. Find that hot spot in your fire pot. And when I first hit this, I just want to tap it. I don't want to hit it too hard. Oh, I'm getting it too hot, so i got to get it out of there. It's okay. It's not too bad. So I just want to tap it together. And there it is stuck. It's stuck in the middle. Now I'm going to uh, I'm going to brush it off, flux it some more. Take another welding heat on it.
think I'll take one more heat just to make sure. It's pretty well welded. It shouldn't come apart. But I'll take a light welding heat on this and uh, just kind of clean it up a little bit. Usually I do it in two heats. Little bit too hot there. But that's okay. Oh yeah, that's a that's a good weld. I'll leave it just a little thicker there. That is a wear area, you know, it's gonna wear from the chain rubbing on it over its useful life. So I think I'll leave that a little bit thicker there. A little bit of a weld witness right there, which is typical. What I'm gonna do, so I'm just shaping it, getting ready to make a big wishbone out of it. And what I'm messing around with here is the lever for the clinker breaker. I'm just trying to break up uh, any clinker that's in the bottom of the fire pot to get more action, more air. And if I need to, I can take this poker, shut down there, make sure my right, the hole down there is open and I'm getting air. You can see how much more action I'm getting out of that fire. I don't care at this point if it's fully and perfectly formed because I've got to flatten one side of it to get the ring over. I'm just kind of rough shaping it at this point. 
And then the next step will be to make the ring, to weld the ring, and then uh, flatten one of those uh, ends, put the ring on, and then reform it to its final shape. really good test of the weld. It's great. Weld is good. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. And then I'll make the ring that slips over this, and then I'll flatten this end, slip the ring over, form it, and make it perfect. So that's good enough right now. So I'll just let that cool down and I'll start making the ring, which is another forge weld. And making the ring is just like making a chain link, except I'm going to put it on here and I'm going to make it round. And I measured the ring on uh, the ones I've already made. And it's uh, 1.5 inches in diameter, center to center. So 1.5 times pi equals 4.71. So I'll cut a length that about four and three quarters. I'll, I'll cut it a little bit longer, just a hair longer, to make up for the overlap. And then when I make the overlap, it should come out perfect to uh, a 1.5 inch diameter. All right, so I'll get started on that. Okay, I have my four and uh, three quarter inch piece here. Again, three eighths round stock. Let's start making that ring. Just like before, just going to bend it into a U. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm just guessing. It's pretty close. It's a little off. I'll just, uh, if I can keep from dropping it. I'll just grab it, hit it on the opposite end. Until I get it close. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Because you're going to bring over both sides in. Anyway. Good enough. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, scarf one of the ends. Enough.
All right, let's get that heated up. Fluxed and now let's weld it. Problem with making a ring that small, it's as easy to lose it in the fire. Definitely stuck. Be careful not to burn it up. Yeah, it's a good weld, a couple of witness lines, and that's about it. Let's make a circle out of it, instead of a chain link.
I'm gonna get that, per that circle nice and perfect, just like that. It's kind of hard to hold it. I would say that's a pretty good circle, huh? It's a little, it's not flat, let's flatten it. So I can hold on to it. I'll heat it and flatten it. And if you have a hard time holding it, you can always uh, put it into the jaws of your vise and flatten it out. That's pretty good. Okay, we got a ring. Okay, let's uh, let's heat the end of this, flatten it out, put the ring on. As you can see, it didn't take me very long to make that ring. As much chain as I made in my life, you get kind of used to it. The weld is uh, it's pretty good. You can see a little bit. I don't know if you can see this. I might be too close. It's a little bit. It's kind of thick there. It's not perfect. I can do better, but I'm trying not to make a two hour long video either. But it's definitely good. Put the ring on without burning yourself. And let's try to open this back up now. You can see the ring is on there now. Then we're going to come off. I'll take a little bit of time and I'll make this look, you know, each end look exactly the same. And then next comes the hook. It comes over. That's the next part to make. 
Okay, so this next piece is the hook, and it needs to be uh, approximately eight inches long. It's size to fit, so I will cut it to length uh, once I get the majority of it made. But first of all, I need to taper the end. I don't want to taper it too much, just a little bit, and then I'll start forming the rest of the piece. Well, I'll start forging the rest of the piece because I'm going to I'm going to flatten part of it out just a little bit. And then I'll make the hook that goes on to the main body for the binder. Fire's a little cold. Now tapering that isn't really that necessary. You can just leave it all around, the whole thing. But I like a little bit of style to it, you know? So what I did is I squared it up, tapered a little bit, and then rounded it back up. And now right behind that taper, I'm just going to square it up just a little bit. Not square it, I'm going to flatten it just a little bit, leaving the top and the bottom round with kind of flat sides. Which, when you think about it, it adds a little bit of strength in the width of it. But this is a small chain binder, so you know we're not we're not putting tons of force on this. Although it will hold a lot. But it's not like I'm chaining down an automobile with this.
Okay, so now I need to put a kind of a long sweeping bend in this. I'm just cooling it down because uh, the heat's starting to climb up where I'm grabbing it with my hand. I made a little bit of an S bend in that, and eventually all of this will be one big curve. But I don't know how long I need it yet. I'm kind of curving it now a little bit. Then I'll match it up to the chain binder and then kind of figure out from there how much more I need and then I'll cut it off. Okay, I'm going to uh, get some soap sewn, kind of figure out about what I need, and then I'll cut it off. Okay, I've cut it off, and now I need to make a circle right here. A loop, a bend, whatever you want to call it.
Okay, that should be perfect. Now I need to bend that away and it needs to come down like that. Okay, that one bend is complete. I uh, may have missed turning on the camera on that one. If I did, I do apologize. All I have left to do now, just put a slight bend here. And I may curve this up just a hair. If I didn't miss that, you didn't miss anything. All I did was just bend that around here. It took, you know, 10 seconds. And then you just saw me bend that. And that should be pretty close. Yes, I do believe that'll work. I'm going to leave that right there. So, <clears throat> the only thing left to do now is to, I'm going to go over to the vise. I'm going to heat this in, bend it back, put it on to the main body of the chain binder, close it up, and then we're done. Except for maybe some brushing off. So, um, I'll get set up over there at the vise. Heat this up, bring it over, and then we shall uh, finish this project up. Sorry if you can't see this, folks. I should have probably done it on the opposite end there. But it is attached. I'm going to hammer that down a little bit. Turns good. Let's uh, cool it off and see what we got. Here we go. I do need to make some adjustments. It's sitting up a little bit too high. I would like that a little, a little more, see if I can get you here, a little more bent right here. Other than that, it is finished. It's wet. I hope you folks can see this okay. But we got a mini chain binder. Then this will work in the, in the configuration that it's in. But I prefer a little bit more of a bend here. It should have just slightly more bend to it. And I can always correct that. But this video is getting long. Hopefully you folks can see that okay. And there you go. Okay, folks, uh, thanks for watching. Sorry I didn't capture the end of that as well as I should have. Um, but you get the idea, I believe. Um, it's a mini chain binder. And like I said, I've, I've used these before. I just love them. You've seen the ones on my truck at the beginning of the video. Uh, I think the ring on the ones on my truck might have been just a hair smaller. I may have got that overlap. Or I may have cut it off a little bit too long and didn't quite overlap it enough. I don't know. It seems to be farther right here. Um, but that's correctable too. You know, all of this is fixable. The, the main thing is that the welds are good. 
it's functional. It's fully functional the way it is. And these things can actually hold quite a bit of weight. You know, I've used them quite often. You know, I mean, like I said, I'm not going to chain down a car with this. But, you know, a load of lumber on the back of a truck with some chain. You know, it's better than rope. It may not be, you may not be able to tighten it up as good as maybe a strap, you know, a ratchet strap. But I don't know, I've, I've, uh, I've changed, I've, cranked down on these hard enough to where I almost had to put a helper on here to get it down and they never bend and they hold pretty strong you know even considering it's really not that long in fact I wonder how long that is on the overall length let me measure that for you now my curiosity's up eh, it's about eight inches so the total length is about eight inches on these. So not that big. It's a mini, it's a mini chain binder. And if you know how to forge well, and you know, by the way, even if you don't have a forge on something this small, you can almost cold bend this and maybe take a uh a piece of railroad iron and a hammer and bend this and wire feed weld these together. I've seen those too. You know, you don't have to blacksmith this thing. Um, so, you know, you don't need a full blacksmith forge to make these. You can do this with tools. If you, I mean, if you have a welder, you know, heating it up, if you have a torch, that would help to bend it. You know, even though this is 3 8 it's still a little tough to bend cold, but it's possible. You can force it with a hammer, you know, if you have something to pound on, you know, a flat piece of steel, uh, a railroad, a, piece, a chunk of railroad tie, something, you know, that you can, you don't mind pounding on. But, you know, it's a heck of a lot easier if you have a blacksmith forge. But anyway, there it is, my uh, mini chain binder. And I will heat this up. I'll, I'll, I'll make that bend a little bit better. And then I'll uh, give it a good scrub down with a brush. Heat it up, put a coat of wax on it. And, you know, I'll put it on the wall and use it and keep it in case I need it. You know, in the future, I'll hook some chain to it. I've got tons of chain laying around, you know, and none of it have I knew. Uh, I'm always going to uh, auctions and estate sales and yard sales. And if I see a good chunk of chain, you know, and it's reasonably priced, a dollar or two, I'll buy it. It's a heck of a lot cheaper, as long as it's not all worn out, you know. And if it has a couple of worn links on the end, you can always cut those off, you know. But if it has, you know, a fairly good link to it, and it's cheap, I'll buy it. And uh, I got chain over there behind you hanging on the wall. I got chain in my other shop, I got chain hanging in the barn, you know, so now I got a little mini chain binder, and if I need to use it, who knows, maybe I'll put a third one on my racks on my truck, I don't know, this is fully usable, it's not as nice, because I was kind of in a hurry to make this video, it's not exactly as nice as the ones I've got on my truck, because I took some extra time, I wasn't pressured by making a video, and I, I made the welds perfect on those, and made everything just right, and you know, I can, I can, heat these welds up and kind of make a nice and round and perfect if I want. But the welds are good and they're going to hold forever. So, you know, that might just be a waste of time. But anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And hopefully I can get back to making more videos. All right. Talk to you later.